Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription this amazing and wonderful morning. I'm excited as always to have the privilege and the opportunity to speak into our lives by the grace of God. It is another morning that the Lord has given to us. I want to pray and then we'll listen to the voice of the King. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you glory and honor, adoration, power and praise. And we thank you, Father, you've given us another time to listen to your voice. And so I pray this morning that you give us understanding, that you minister to us, O oh God, that this word, whoever it shall reach to, whoever shall be touched, O oh God, that their lives will be transformed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the grace. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for the reach. I pray that this morning, Father, your word will go out with anointing and revelation in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we bless you and we honor you. Take control and take charge in Jesus' name. Amen. What a privilege, what an opportunity to listen to the word of God. This morning, I have a message. It is your turn. It is your turn. You see, every time you go to, you have an appointment, you're waiting at the reception of an office, wherever it is, a time comes when you're beckoned in, it is your chance. When you go to see a doctor, you're prepared, you know, your, your vitals are taken and then you're asked, it's your time to see the doctor. Uh, when you go to, you're flying out of the country, uh, you hear an announcement that, you know, flight number this and this will be, you know, the gates for boarding are open. So while you are waiting at the launch or you are waiting uh, in a place secluded for your place, then when your time comes to board, your ticket is checked out and your boarding pass and then you are asked to, you are ushered into the plane. All these moments signify your time. I want to read the Bible in the book of John chapter number 5. We're going to read quite a number of verses there this morning, but I want you to understand that it is your turn. Now, John chapter number 5 from verse number 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem, by the ship gate, a pool, which is called Hebrew in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of, peop of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the, move on, for the moving of the water. Verse number 4. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease that he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been there in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Verse number 8. Jesus said to him, Rise up, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it is your turn. Now, one of the worst things that can ever happen in a person's life is when your time and opportunity has come and you don't even notice it. Praise God. Now, many people, because they knew at the pool there was a solution, they were stuck there for many years. And this particular individual had been at the pool for 38 long years, not one year. Not 5 years, not 10 years, not 15 years, not 20 years, not even 30 years, not 35 years. He had been in this place for 38 years. Quite a long time. And so you can imagine, he had got every reason to give up. But he kept believing. He kept believing because he knew every year once there was an opportunity for him to receive the healing he so much expected. Now, how many things have you given up in life? How many things have you lost up hope in your life? I want to tell you this morning, it is your turn. Now, when Jesus shows up in this place, he asks, he knows, and the Bible tells us, 
He, having known the man had been there for a long time, Jesus understood. He says in verse number 6, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Praise the Lord. So there's nothing in our lives, there's nothing that God does not know. Our struggles, our anxieties, all these things that trouble our minds and our hearts, Jesus knows. So he asked the man, do you want to be made whole? Now, this is something I've preached before and I want to bring to your understanding this morning. Now, it is such a tragedy when your turn has come and you're concentrating on things that do not matter. You can imagine you're sitting at the reception and you're supposed to, uh, to get into the plane. You have to stop everything you're doing and walk to the gate so you can get to the plane. When you have an appointment with a doctor, you have to stop everything else you're doing, get into the you know, consultancy room and let your issue be sorted out. Now, the biggest tragedy in the lives of people is that when your opportunity has come, you concentrate on things that do not matter. Now, Jesus asked this man, do you want to be made well? And the man says, I have no man. You see, Jesus asked a very straightforward question. Do you want to be made well? But the man says, I have got no man. And he tries to explain his story. That when the water is stirred up, while I'm coming in, somebody else goes before me. It is true. There are people who have gone ahead of you. There are people who have done things you have not done. There are people who appear to have succeeded before you. Maybe you started at the same time. Maybe you're even peers, your age mates, you're from the same place, the same tribe, but these people have gone ahead of you. Now, all of us have got a reason to say somebody else has done much better than we have done. That is fact. But Jesus said, do you want to be made well? Do you want God to come through for you? Do you want a solution for your life? Do you want to see great things happen in your life? You have to rise up above the environment you find yourself in right now. Jesus says, do you want to be made well? And then uh, Jesus uh, did not even bother about the excuses the man gave. He did not bother about what this individual said. He says, rise up, take your bed, and walk. And immediately, Babu tells us, the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. Now, if you read verse number 9, yeah, the final part says, and that day was Sabbath. Verse number 10, the Jews therefore said to him who was cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. The man was very wise. Verse number 11, he says, he answered, he who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. Very interesting. Now, I want you to know there will always be people who will find a problem with your blessing. People want you to stay where you are. People want you to continue to suffer. When you build a house, people complain. They say the house is not as big as it should have been. They say you should have used another material. They say maybe the design is not correct. But the difference is it is not their vision. It's not their dream. So no matter what you do, there will be people who will find a problem in what you're doing. But it is your turn. It is your turn. This morning, it is your turn. It is your turn for success. It's your turn for victory. It's your turn for favor. It's your turn for glory. It's your turn for success. Hallelujah. This man had been there for 38 long years, but God came through for him. So even you, God is going to come through for you because it is your turn. It is your turn. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, let us know it is our turn to shine and God is coming through for us. If he came through for this man who had been sick for 38 long years, waiting for a miracle every year, every year without giving up, we are not going to give up. It is our turn. I don't know what challenge you face this morning. I don't know what it is you're going through, but I want to tell you it's your turn to get into the consultancy room of Jesus Christ and he will provide the necessary prescription to make your condition better. Will you believe it? Shall we pray? Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you because of your word. We thank you because of your voice. Continue to bless us. Continue to lift us. Continue to guide us. 
for the glory of your name. It's our turn, O oh God, to shine. It's our turn to rise up for the glory of your name. This is our prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you wherever you are. God be with you. This has been your host, Pastor Johnston Sack. We're coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription, your daily morning dose of the Word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. No matter where we are, no matter which environment, we'll keep speaking the Word of God into your life as God enables us. God bless you. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning by the grace of God. This is your day. Don't give up. It is your turn. God bless you.